You're watching Marsha, Marsha, Marsha on ViroBuzzTV.com. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Buzz TV. It is the pet of the week, and oh, Janet Winnikoff, that really wonderful educational director with our Humane Society here in Indian River County, you have done it again. Yeah. Bigfoot? Bigfoot, yes. I love it. I love it. Tell me about Bigfoot. Oh, my gosh, Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those. He's got some paws on him, right? You don't Absolutely. have to go into the forest to look for Bigfoot, a no. mysterious creature, because... Look at even his back feet are yes. huge. We have Bigfoot right at the Humane Society. <laughs> we do indeed. Tell me about Bigfoot. Oh, someone has to have Bigfoot. Yes. <gasps> He's up for adoption. He is up for adoption, and he is adorable. Uh, he is about eight months old. He's a domestic short hair cat, male, and uh, he was recently surrendered to the Humane Society because the family just said it was too much responsibility. Oh. They had children at home. They um, found him uh, and they actually brought him into their home because they felt bad that he was loose, uh, loose yeah. and stray, right? So they brought him in, but as much as they love him, they said, you know, we, we want to do right by him, but um, we just don't have sure. the time to take care of him. But that's what you advocate, isn't it? When If you can't take care of your animals, don't just let them go. Bring them to the Humane Society, call the, and, and make sure that they, somebody does adopt them. Right. Oh my gosh, I can't get over his feet. Yeah, that, that is absolutely, Marsha, what we do advocate for is for people to make responsible decisions. And so we um, want to be there as a support for people. If they have a situation where they're thinking about getting a, a new home for their animal, we first want to say to them, hey, is there some way that we can salvage this relationship? And is there something sure. that we can do to help? But if not, then we'll say, yes, please bring the animal in so that we can try and rehome that, that pet for you. So, you know, whether it's uh, bringing animals into us or um, uh, our shelter staff adopting animals and making sure that it's a responsible adoption, we want to do what's right by the animal and for the people sure. in our community. Well, I think what you're doing, you're, you're really talking about in many cases, if, if someone who's been a pet lover all their life and, and unfortunately passes away and people say, what in the world can we do with the animal? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the one time when they need to find you and to talk with you about that because you really go through all the processes, don't you? Right. Is, is he or is he declawed in the front? Uh, no, he is not. <laughs> Who's the biggest? He should be the tiger. Yeah, he is a, He is but absolutely he, I adorable. I haven't seen his, his claws at all. He doesn't bring his claws out. Yeah, he's um he's really pretty gentle. He's a good he's a good guy and he's um, uh, polydactyl, which has I means he has pardon? multiple uh, toes uh, oh, on all feet. Nice. So he's really cute. What? But That is the cutest thing I have ever seen. Oh, my golly. Yeah. So um, you were mentioning before, which is absolutely right, about um, uh, people who may go into nursing homes or yes. pass away, and we want to do right by them. And what we want to try and do is... Uh, let them know that there are options available so that their pets can be taken care of if something happens. You know, this is wonderful. And I know that you're not really a, a nursing home, so to speak, or you're not just a motel hotel because a lot of people say, well, maybe while I go on vacation, I'll take my animal to the Humane Society. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Uh, it's not. We don't have boarding facilities. <laughs> but not having when you get home because they'll try and have it adopted. Right. <laughs> But um, uh, we do want to be able to provide resources for people who have emergencies. So we've had situations where people's uh, homes have been uh, uh, damaged from hurricanes oh, yes, or they've had some kind of an emergency. And in that case, we will try to help. We're going to take a very br brief break and then come back and we're going to really talk about Bigfoot because I want this Bigfoot to be in somebody's happy home. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Bay Street Pharmacy in Sebastian invites you to see our new selection of holiday cards and gifts. For more than 30 years, Bay Street Pharmacy has been your neighborhood pharmacy and one-stop health care center, offering prompt personal service, home delivery, and a dedicated staff that treats our customers like family with care and compassion. Now we have wonderful cards and gifts for the holiday season. Bay Street Pharmacy, where caring people care for you. Join us for an adventure weekdays at 4.30 and 8.30 on Buzz TV Network. And we are back as promised and we are here with Janet Winnikoff of our Humane Society and Bigfoot. I say he's Big Bigfoot. 
he he's super has, bigfoot. And you say he's, what is the word? If Polydactyl, he has, which means he has more than the appropriate number of toes. On both, on all four on feet? On all fours, yes. <laughs> all four feet, oh, he is absolutely adorable. And he's just gentle as well. He is very, very gentle, very sweet. I'm sure that um, the treats that um, your <laughs> staffer here, uh, Holly, Holly yeah. has given him, uh, that certainly is helping his uh, demeanor. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to backtrack just a little bit because we were talking about how having individuals who maybe have to go into a nursing home or, or have to, in some way or another, have to get rid of their parents. And, mm -hmm. and they're worried about where they can leave. Talk to me a little bit more about that. So, you know, I think it's a good conversation to have is that if you have animals, you need to be able to say to yourself, if something happens to me, what happens to him? Yes. So what exactly do they ask themselves? You know, people should be asking themselves, if something happens to me, what happens to him? What happens to my pets? It's really important to be, be thinking along those lines so that if somebody is in a situation where they can no longer care for their animal or they pass away, that they have somebody who's a backup person and that they've had that discussion in advance. So for instance, I might say to you, Marsha, you know, I wanted to know if something happens to me, would you be able to take care of my animals? And if so, would you be able to take care of them in this particular way? Sure. So yeah. you may say, you know, Janet, I would be happy to do that for you. Or you might say, Janet, you know what, that's really, you know, not something yeah. I could do. But you should have that conversation so that if something happens to me, somebody doesn't come to you and say, Marsha, Janet's just left you her animals to take yeah. care of. So you should be having those conversations what with about people. writing it down? Absolutely. So you can uh, go ahead and write it down. And it's also good if somebody uh, agrees to take care of your animals to um, have a legal document drawn up. And you can also leave money. Uh, mm -hmm. so that that animal can be cared for, so that, you know, whoever is taking care of your animal also has funds available for medical expenses and food. I think what you're saying is you treat your, your pets just like you do your own family. Absolutely. And you want to make sure that they're taken care of and, and so many different things. And I think really what's wonderful, too, is, Janet, you're available to go and speak to organizations, are you not? Absolutely. Absolutely. We would love to uh, come out to any organization that has questions regarding pet care, uh, even things like this about making plans for sure. your pets, whether it's um, uh, if, if somebody ha is hospitalized or if there's a natural disaster. We want to be able to, to give people the resources so they can take care of their animals. All right. We only have a minute left, and I was wondering about, are there different events coming up that we can be a part of? Oh, absolutely. So I think our main event that we have coming up is on Saturday, January 16th. It's uh -huh. Bark in the Park at Riverside Park. So uh, Bark it's a, in the Park. Bark I love that. Park. And it is a free event. You can bring your dog and or your dogs. And it's a great uh, day that we have. Uh, it runs throughout the day. We're going to have lots of great events, uh, food, there's games. There are great things to do with your dog. You no have, cats, I'm sorry. Oh, but you have to just go check out Bigfoot. He, he needs an adult. He needs a home, a happy home. He is absolutely wonderful. Biggest feet I have ever seen on any <laughs> animal, including tigers and lions and so on. Absolutely beautiful. And remember that even at, from what I'm reading down here, you even have a list of apartments that will accept pets when somebody's looking around. Is absolutely. that right? Absolutely. So if there is anybody who is um, saying, oh, I'm having a hard time finding a, a place to live in Indian River County, the Humane Society does keep a list handy with the information regarding uh, what kind of pets are allowed, weight requirements, uh, breeds, yeah. etc. So give all us the a call. All the information you need to know about all animals and of course the most important thing, find out about Bigfoot because oh he needs a home and he will be loving. Yes. Janet Winnikoff, thanks so very much for being with us. Marcia, thanks for having me on. And thanks for watching. We'll be right back. Watch Chamber Buzz at 6 and 10 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays on HeroBuzzTV.com. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jim. Together we are the Live Now Real Estate Team at Remax Associated Realty. We know the Sebastian area real estate market very well, and we also know that buying or selling a home can be very serious business. But together we can reduce the stress and even have fun in the process. Along with our hundreds of satisfied clients, we really want you to Live now and be happy too. Contact us at the livenowteam.com. See you soon.
Well, hello everyone, and we are back indeed with Buzz TV. And oh, I just feel like we should have flowers surrounding us here <laughs> because we're going to be talking about the Garden Club, actually, the Garden Club of Indian River County. Okay. That really encompasses everything. So let me first of all welcome Kathy Altoff. Wonderful to Thank see you. you. Thank you. And you are the president I of am. this club. And of course, Kath, no, actually, it's Renee Sen. And Renee, you are the lady who's going to be telling us all about, and I love this title, Civic Chairman. What is a Civic Chairman of a Garden Club? Well, we do civic projects Aha. in our community. You certainly do. And how wonderful. Yes. And you're the chairman. I am now. Yes. <laughs> you are indeed. Besides being ornament chairman. And that <laughs> is the other thing, the ornament chairman. And this is what I'm so delighted because I don't know if you know, but I'm on the board of the ELC. So I was there was a little bit of an interest of getting you here <laughs> to really oh, talk okay, about this magnificent ornament. So Renee, why don't you start off and show and show the viewer that magnificent that has to be the prettiest one. I have several of them over the years, but that has to be one of the more beautiful ones. Well, it, yes. it is very colorful this year. Uh, we've done more colors than we have in the past. They seem to get that way every year. Yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, Arun, who is the designer, Arun Wajilecki, is the designer of this ornament. It's our 24th ornament in our series, a very collectible series. Yes. And an informational brochure about ELC tells all about the mission of ELC and everything. And you'll see all the activities oh, and all the wildlife. With, yes, it's the, in the shape of a crab. The kayak. I yes, mean, I the think children. Yes, the, just in the canoe, the canoe trips. Yes, the canoe, the hermit crab, the horseshoe crab, the tree crab, the turtle. You know what I love mm -hmm. about it, too, is because this is collectible. And over yes. the years, you have designed so many beautiful ones. Oh. And I had the privilege of talking with Rune, and oh, what a talent. Oh, she said, amazing. and one of the things that we love, yes. they're made in the USA. That is correct. They're made in uh, by a company called Chemart in Rhode Island, Lincoln, and yet Rhode she, Island. She designs them and creates them, yes. and then they're made, because so often you see these little things, and they're made in China or mm -hmm. someplace like that. But yes. you know, this is so beautiful. They are available. We're going to tell you how everyone can have one. But I want to go back a little bit, though, and talk about this garden club. Okay. Even before we went on, we were looking through, because I wanted to see about the names where my mom knew the people that were here back, and I saw right. 1928. Wow, that was a long time ago. Right, so we're it's 87 years old. Wow. Wow. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? And it was started by three ladies who got together in their home. I believe our club house was built in, I think, 1965. Oh, boy. By some ladies who just decided that we needed a place to meet, and they went after it. It's and right it's, over there, isn't it? Right over on the 25th? Where uh, is? It's on the corner of 17th and 26th. 26th. Oh, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, and so you have, and you're in that garden club ho house right now, but you have shows there. You have so many different things that go on. We're going to take a little break in just a minute, okay. and I want to come back and talk about the Garden Fest, the flower show, and how we can indeed find the ornament, ornament, but also how mm -hmm. people can join the Garden Club. Because if you want to know about every little plant in your <laughs> yard, and you may be from <laughs> Rochester, say, <laughs> Oh, Rochester, Buffalo. You're not from Rochester, okay. <laughs> but you don't know what the plants are? Let me tell you, you belong to the Garden Club, you will know everything. And you'll know why the salt spray can only, you know, tolerate, plants can only tolerate salt spray or not. We'll be right back, don't go away. Bay Street Pharmacy in Sebastian invites you to see our new selection of holiday cards and gifts. For more than 30 years, Bay Street Pharmacy has been your neighborhood pharmacy and one-stop health care center, offering prompt personal service, home delivery, and a dedicated staff that treats our customers like family with care and compassion. Now we have wonderful cards and gifts for the holiday season. Bay Street Pharmacy, where caring people care for you. Watch Chamber Buzz at 6 and 10 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays on HeroBuzzTV.com.
And we are back, as promised, and we are talking about the Garden Club of Indian River County and these wonderful ornaments that are going to be available. And Renee, very quickly, though, I have a list here of all of the merchants that will be selling yes. this. Uh, and they're currently right now on for sale. Oh, absolutely. Yes. All through the house. I'm going down here. Um, uh, oh, Cousteau, Cousineau, Jewelers. Zoran Jewelers. Zoran Jewelers, Jewelers. Massage Hair and Nails. Oh, all of these. I know I'm going to leave somebody out. McKee Botanical Garden. But yes. they are collectible. How many are already uh, created? Uh, this year we ordered 2,650. No, I mean how many? How many? 24 oh, years. 24 oh, this years. is our 24th ornament. Oh, yes. Just we started with the railroad station in 1992. And here we are in 2015 with the ELC. Oh, well, it is just absolutely beautiful. And you do have so many other events coming up as well. So, Kathy, if Thank you will, you. Tell, tell about the, the Garden Fest. Well, coming. Garden Fest is absolutely the prime garden show of the year. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, it yes. Is, it it's is held at Riverside Park. It is February 6th and 7th, all we Super Bowl Sunday. Oh. So you can kind of leave your <laughs> husband home to get ready for, in my case, my husband gets ready for our party. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Garden Fest And you Fest watch week. the football game. No, uh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we have usually 80-some vendors. <gasps> so the plants are magnificent, truly. And if I'm not mistaken, their garden plants, their garden, even some some fountains and some metal work that you Everything can find. Yeah. garden related. Anything it, garden yes. related. Yes. It's the yes. most beautiful garden show ever. It is. It truly is. And there's so many wind chimes and various things like that that you can find and a lot of explanation about those plants that we're wondering about. Yes, we right. have a Ask the Experts tent and we have ongoing little um, when is this seminars. Happening? February 6th and 7th. February 6th and 7th, we're yes. gonna do this again and maybe even bring a, but now where is it that you show people how to make arrangements and flower arrangements? Is that, that your? That we do not do at, that we hold different a flower meetings show. at. Yeah. Before a flower show. Usually. That's where it comes Which, in. You want to become a garden club member uh -huh. to <laughs> learn floral design. Oh, yes. Right. And how does one become a member of the garden club? Well, you may call us and we'll you call send us. You we it. have a website. It's www.gardenclubofirc.org. Oh, this is wonderful. You can check us out. Because everyone, I'm not kidding, I'm a Florida native and I still, I know nothing about, I mean everything I look at, I remember those beautiful little yellow plants that would come up and pop up and I thought they were so beautiful and they were weeds <laughs> and I didn't realize that. But, and I think that, I think um, they came over by another country or something and all of a sudden they infested mm -hmm. every, everything. But you've got to learn all of this. But this yes, is what you can do. We also offer floral design study courses too. Oh, terrific. To make and so once again, how would someone be able to uh, join the Garden Club? Go to the website, or you could call us. Yes. At, and I don't know the number offhand. But just look uh, up Garden Club of Indian River County. True. Yes. And you would be able to come and go to when do your meetings? When are your meetings? We now? have nine circles that mm -hmm. meet various ah. times. Oh, now that's so wonderful. Yes. We have about 200 and pretty close to 240 members. See, this is what in I In the know. nine circles. And the yes. circles, so it's convenient. And they're all named after flowers, too. That's right. why you see them all. That's like she belongs to Jasmine, I belong to Carissa. Oh my goodness, and those are two beautiful plants. Too. And right yeah. now, Sea Grape Circle is meeting there today, and they just celebrated 50 years of their circle. Oh my golly, Sea and Grape, ten, gotta wrap this up. 10 of the original members were First. at that meeting. How fabulous, that's what, that that's what gardening does for you. <laughs> Thanks ladies so much yes. for being with us. We'll see you thank at the Garden Fest. Thank you, Marsha. Oh, forget. thank you so thank much. Thank you for promoting. wonderful, beautiful ornament. Our we'll be back in just ornament. a moment. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jim. Together we are the Live Now Real Estate Team at Remax Associated Realty. We know the Sebastian area real estate market very well, and we also know that buying or selling a home can be very serious business. But together we can reduce the stress and even have fun in the process. Along with our hundreds of satisfied clients, we really want you to live now and be happy too. Contact us at thelivenowteam.com. See you soon. Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage, but you can pay too much. 
As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money. Well, welcome back, everyone. You're watching Buzz TV. I'm Marsha Littlejohn, and I am here with Christine Hobart. And Christine, I have to say that McKee Botanical is so magnificent. You are the executive director. You must just feel like you're in heaven every time you walk by. Yeah, I know. I pull into the parking lot every day, and it's literally like instant relaxation. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's beautiful. Well, it truly is beautiful. And I know we were there with a group of uh, Treasure and Space Caves radio uh, individuals mm -hmm. that were taking pictures because you cannot find more magnificent backing with the water lilies and the beautiful, beautiful uh, trails that you have there. So tell me about what happens during the holidays at McKee Botanical Garden. Sure, yeah, it's a very special time of the year for us. We do very few nighttime events, so holidays at McKee, and then it's followed up by Nights of Lights. Ah, oh, beautiful. Uh, yeah, there are two holiday events, and holidays at McKee is December 21st, 22nd, and 23rd from 6 to 8. Oh. Mm. And we have, of course, Santa Claus and Mrs. Santa and Mrs. Claus. Um, we have a letter writing station where the kids can write a letter to Santa. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, go have their picture taken. We have a little candy shop. And then, of course, the garden itself is lit with thousands of oh, lights. It must be so much fun getting that all ready. It and, is, oh and it's boy. already started. I can imagine, and of course this is, you know, the beginning of December, and it goes on, what is the, yes. where, when are the dates for uh, December 21st, 22nd, and 23rd is oh. the holidays. And yes. we, have, we have to really mark that on our calendar because the time is, you have daytime and nighttime. We do, you? yeah, the garden is open 10 to 5. We close at five, and then we reopen from six to eight during the holiday event. Now, will your bistro be open? It will, yes. Osceola Bistro is the proprietor for the garden oh, cafe. delicious. They are yes. wonderful. <gasps> Yes, they'll be open. They'll have cider, cookies, oh. um, a light dinner, light snack. And I love the night of lights because that just kind of gets us into that wonderful holiday spirit. Yeah, and nights of lights, you know, Christmas is over, so that stress is gone. And then nights of lights follows, you know, Christmas. and Get you ready for the new year? Yes, exactly. And that's December 28th, 29th, and 30th. Oh, wow. Yes. Boy, oh boy, you all are really busy. December comes around, yeah. <laughs> And we are very busy. Do you know, yes. I, I often think, and I just love, this is one of the reasons I love Buzz TV, is because I know, I mean, I can even call my daughter up in South Carolina and, and say, you know, I'm sending it up, just check out uh, such and such on your iPad or your, your you know, the internet mm -hmm. and check this out. And so I really want all of us to get a little bit of a history of McKee with you. Sure. So tell our viewers from all over the world a little bit about McKee Botanical Garden. Yeah, absolutely. The original McKee opened in 1932 Ooh. as McKee Jungle Gardens. Uh -huh. And in its heyday, it was the third largest tourist attraction in the state of Florida with over 100,000 visitors annually. Oh my gosh, with a great big orange right out there in front yes. that I remember so yes. maybe not back in. When did it open? 1932. Okay, it was a little yeah. bit before my time, but then I remember that. And we're going to take a little break now, though, and then we're going to come back. And I want you to tell, you pro you wouldn't remember because you weren't even alive then. But I remember monkeys yes. in McKee Botanical mm -hmm. Garden. And I have a friend who even remembers a great big elephant yes. that went through one time. Yep. Hence, McKee Jungle Gardens, but now McKee Botanical yeah. Gardens. I'm yeah. going to take that one minute break and be right back with my guest, Christine Hobart. She is the executive director of McKee Botanical Garden. Don't go away. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Hi, I'm Penny Chandler. I'm, I'm Freddie Woolfolk. I am Barbara Hoffman. And I'm Gregory Simpson. I'm here with Police Chief David Curry. You're in good company on VeroBuzzTV.com, Vero Beach's local TV station on the Internet. I just love it. Tell a friend. We love you Now that health reform is law, you cannot be denied health insurance coverage. But you can pay too much. 
As a single mom, I was convinced that we could not afford health insurance until I spoke to the people from ICANN, who told me that I qualified for a special enrollment and a subsidized rate. Now I get so much more for so much less. Call now and get the ICANN mobile app free. So don't wait another minute. Call ICANN, get covered, save money. See Arts in Depth with Barbara Hoffman, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 and 10 p.m. And we are back indeed. And Christine, once again, if you just kind of give us a kind of an update. We started in 1932, mm -hmm. McKee Botanical Garden. We're right now in 2015. Wow. Yes. It yeah. was closed for a while. It wasn't was. It? There was a gap of about 20 years uh -huh. plus um, where the garden closed. What happened was in the 19, late 1960s, 70s, visitors' interest changed. Mm -hmm. Disney came around, um, they were built, and then, you know, interest changed. You know, you no longer yeah. had to take US 1 to and from South Florida. The Florida Turnpike and I 95 were built. So McKee Jungle Gardens closed in 1976. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. Yes. yes. Yeah. And the original garden was 80 acres. And then all but 18 acres was sold off. And it's now what you would call Vista Gardens, and you know there's a golf course as well. That's so. right, just to the south of it. it is. So that it's still it's there, but but to me, it is pristine. Your your beautiful McKee Botanical Garden, Thank just you. perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and we have the core. No more animals, though. No, no more. No, no more. Anything no more. that's there yeah. is there naturally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we have the core. You know, we have the old historic yes. building, the Hall of Giants, the Spanish Kitchen, and um, the water lilies. The water the, lilies. Oh, yes. The beautiful ponds. Yep. The little ponds yep. there too. We have one of the largest water lily collections in the state yes. of Florida. And if so. you've ever seen Suzanne Phillips's mm. painting of those water lilies, yes. maybe we'll get her in here in our art. We should. Yes. Yes. And show her artwork. Oh, Suzanne. She would love to do that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it is something wonderful. And I think during Christmas, the holiday season. So before we have to wrap this up, sure. if you will, Christine, once again, tell all of our viewers how they can enjoy McKee Botanical Garden during the holiday yep, time. Absolutely. Holidays at McKee is December 21st, 22nd, and 23rd from 6 to 8, and then Nights of Lights is the following week on the 28th, 29th, and 30th from 6 to 7.30. Oh, fabulous. You have events. And do you have a website that we can we go? We do, yep. It's mckeegarden.org. Oh, good. Because yes. all of that will be there listed when Santa will be there. And yes. You can even write a little note to Absolutely. Santa. Absolutely. But yes. now, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are coming back for oh. the third and final time, and that will be February 2nd. Oh, my three goodness. Months. See, this yeah. is what is so much fun. And I did get that notification from you that the, the bistro, Osceola yes. Bistro, is open now. Yes, and, now uh, open for the season. Open for the season. And what are the hours there? Their hours know? are Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 2.30, and Sunday noon to 2.30. Oh, boy. And that is wonderful. Just to be able to go and walk around. And do you have... It's open on the weekends, isn't it? It's open, yeah, the cafe is open Saturday. But McKee is oh, open. Oh, McKee, yes. Yep, we're open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5, and Sundays, noon to 5. Oh, boy. If you want to just relax and feel good, I know just the other day I had Dr. Brignoli from the Mental Health Association on my show, and, and he was talking about the importance of relaxing. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was being able to walk out into our nature. Yes. And that is the most wonderful yeah. opportunity for everyone. So holiday time, Christmas time at McKee Botanical Gardens. Fantastic. Thank Thanks you. so very much for being with us. Website once again? McKeeGarden.org. All right. And of course, if you want to really have a delightful, maybe a little bit of cider even while you're yes. taking your Christmas stroll during uh, during the season here at McKee, go into the bistro there as well. Christine, thanks so much Thank for being you. with us. Thanks. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Buzz TV. We'll see you next time. Join Marsha Littlejohn nightly at 5 and 9 on VeroBuzzTV.com. One-of-a-kind videos, unique perspectives, original programming only on Buzz TV Network. Spread the word and tell a friend. Watch Sebastian Plus at 7 and 11 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays on SebastianBuzzTV.com.